Firstly, I'd like to acknowledge traditional owners upon the land we stand and pay my respects to their elders, past and present. Some of you may know I'm on the member for Narry Warren North, but I'm also the Could road you speak to. Speak up, please, or put the mic. Okay, okay, that's all right. That's all right. I'll, I'll use it then. Yeah, no, thank you, Dory. I just thought if I yelled loud enough, you might hear me. Uh, Earlier this year, uh, as I was just indicating, I'm the member for Narry Warren North, but I'm also the roads and ports minister. Not Okay. Okay. As I did, is that loud enough? Yeah. Okay. Uh, Look, earlier this year I was out in Western Victoria and I was uh, looking at a bridge called the Bowdoin Bridge, we upgraded it, and I met a, a gentleman called Joe, and Joe was in his 70s, still working for Vic Roads as a bridge engineer. Uh, Joe came up to me and said, Minister, I've been building roads and bridges my whole working life, and I've seen two great infrastructure booms in, this, in my time. The first was under the Balti, the first was under the Balti government back in the 1960s, and the second is today. And in many ways, Joe was spot on. The Andrews government is building more public transport infrastructure and roads than this state has ever seen before. Tens of billions of dollars worth. Our program is driving the economy, creating thousands of jobs, and it's tackling congestion after years of neglect. For a start, we've increased the capacity of every round of freeway in the state, whether it be the Tullamarine Freeway, the M80 Ring Road, and most importantly, the local residents, the Monash. Now we know the disruption to these works is incredibly frustrating, but we've also put more, more than 30 kilometres of extra lanes on the Monash. They're open and operating. With early works underway and another 36 kilometres of new lanes as part of stage two upgrade of the Monash. And we just didn't talk about it, we actually did it. Because we know as the Melbourne suburbs grow, we need more capacity across our transport network. That means fixing arterial roads too is not just the major motorways. We've embarked on the biggest upgrade of suburban roads this state has ever seen. We're just about to, locally, just about to get underway on fixing Helen Road, a $38.4 million project to improve traffic flow, connectivity and safety between Ormond Road and the South Gippsland um, Highway. We're well underway at Thompson's Road, where the old level crossing of Riverman Park is now gone, and work to duplicate the road is moving ahead. And of course, we're also upgrading the South Gippsland Highway. But even better, at the most recent budget, we committed to $4 billion to fix 22 of our state's most congested roads on our major corridors, whether it be Wyndham in the west, Whittlesea in the north, and right here in places like Casey. The pack package included a bunch of roads in the southeast, such as Nick Stage and Thompson Road Works, Helen North Road in Endeavour Hills, Mary Cranburn Road in Cranburn, Hillsville Quarry Rock Road in Pakenham, Latham's Road in Seaford, including the Newbridge over Peninsula. Canberra and West, Remington Drive in Danny Hill South with a new bridge over the Cranbourne Mine, and Golf Links Road from Peninsula Link to Frankston Flinders Road in Lang uh, Langwarren South. And I should make the point that the Westgate Tunnel Project now underway here as a vital alternative to the Balti, Balti's Westgate Bridge will help people out of the South East too, and many people may say, why? Well, because it's very much of the one singular spine. In a sense, anywhere from where it be packed with, we can reduce congestion in one lot, we can actually provide better flow on the freeways which use that major spine for the Monash and the Princess Freeway. And that's, and we've also got a massive amount of work on the Cranbourne Packham and Frankston rail lines, including removing the level crossings. Bigger and better trains using high capacity signaling will also start running on the um, Be um, Packham Cranbourne line from mid 2019, increasing capacity by more than 40%. Future investment in rail station interchanges, connecting bus service and improved walking and cycling facilities improve the convenience, attractiveness and reliability of modes of transport other than private cars. Improved links with the Monash National Instrument and Invasion Cluster, with the light rail linking Chaston Shopping Centre to Monash University, will improve access to the, uh, to the, the extra 150,000 jobs expected over the uh, next 30 years in that particular part of Melbourne. And of course, Melbourne Metro will be completed by 2025, providing the capacity to run more frequent train service from the suburbs into the city. It's an increase in the amount of work, and I haven't detailed the work in suburban regions or country Victoria at this stage. Um, by, by no means, it's, we've only just started this work. Every morning, one of the first emails I actually get is one of the most important things I actually see, which is a report from the TAC, 
every day it's a single line and this morning it said daily debt rate is 133 two more than Friday last week 30 lower than this time last year <coughs> that very much isn't a number it's very much um, I guess the human suffering that goes on our roads from accidents we've invested 1.4 billion dollars in towards zero road safety action plan and it's very much starting to make a difference, making roads safer by installing flexible safety barriers and rumble strips and other safety treatments, as well as increasing drug driving tests and introducing tougher drink and drug driving for helms. We've also provided uh, <coughs> road safety education to every year 10 student in the state to make sure the next generation are better drivers than we are. And finally, in terms of fairness, just as congestion can be a curse, the cost of running a family car continue to rise. Under Labor, we provided people with flexible registration payment options, offering quarterly and nearly half yearly payments to take the stress out of finding a lump sum at once. We've given half price registration to thousands of apprentices to make sure they can get to and from work or to take to access the skills and the training they need. We've given free licenses to more than 50,000 young people who've gotten through their probationary period without infringement. And just as importantly, we've ensured rego rises roughly in line with inflation, unlike others who cranked it up $133 over four years. So at the next election, we'll be asking you to judge us on our actions. When it comes to keeping Melbourne moving, we promise to keep the foot on the accelerator. It won't be four years of sitting still and planning. We will just continue to get on with the job of rolling out the infrastructure that we say best to be there in Victoria. Thank you.